divine alphabet. Have you ever thought of walking around in a book? Do you get into the book and you walk around and you check out what goes on in the book by being in the book? Blind alphabet is something like that. It's a book. It has hundreds of pages and it has chapters. And it is for blind people to enjoy maybe <laughs> more than sighted people. Uh, we've always had blind people, they want to see art, they see artworks. I'm an artist. And how do we show artworks to blind people? We can't really because um, the galleries, you can't show them a drawing because you have to explain it to them. They can't see a thing or a painting. There are simple things they can't see, like clouds, clouds in the sky. They've never seen a cloud. How do you explain to them what clouds look like? It takes a lot of language. So in the blind alphabet, this strange book in which you walk, it's about language. And they walk in the art gallery. There are these boxes. Each box is a page in a book. And they can find it quite easily. Now for a blind person to find stuff in an art gallery is like quite something because the sculptures can be anywhere. So they have to ask somebody to help them. But in this work, you don't ask, they don't have to ask anyone to help. They can just come to the artwork and they will know immediately once they've bumped into one of the boxes, they'll know what to do. And people who can see, sighted people, you and I, won't know what to do. That was the whole thing. I wanted you to feel what it feels like to be a little bit blind. It's a terrible thing to become blind. So I wanted for sighted people, that's you and I, I wanted for us to feel what it's like to be a little bit blind. Blind people can be born blind or they can become blind later in life. And it's a terrible thing to be blind, not to see. You, you only hear what people say exist around you, but you have no idea if they're lying to you even, or what it might be. Because language can't really do justice to what things really are. And so I wanted for sighted people to feel what it feels like not to see. So I'm hiding my sculptures in these boxes. These are now the pages of the strange book in which you walk around. And when you, when you arrive at the work, it looks like a cemetery full of graves, black graves, hundreds of graves. And they're all black and you can't figure out what the hell's going on. And in addition to that, it says don't touch. Because all the art galleries put that on their wall. Now blind people don't know that it says that. So they touch. And they can see because they see through their hands. And there's braille on the boxes. They can read the braille. And they, uh, um, they can open the boxes and they look at the stuff inside the box and they go back to the braille and check it out. What does it say? And they kind of have great fun. And then the people who can see, that's us now, we check them out and we think there must be something funny going on here. And then usually what happens is we ask the blind people who are having fun, we ask what the hell is going on here? And then they have to explain to us in an art gallery what is going on in these boxes in this big book in which they are walking around. So that's how the work functions. They will explain the, what kind of a shape or structure they are holding in their hand. They're small enough to be picked up and passed around, and then they can explain the language that's used. 
the etymology of the words that are used, the dates in which things are made. There's a whole story written for each shape. So it's it's a kind of um, dictionary, I can say a dictionary of morphology, of shapes and stru structures and, and forms. And it explains words that are not really known by people who have studied art. So the, the people who know a lot about art, they're really blind. They don't know the words, they can't see the work, and they get, sometimes they get a bit angry as well. And I don't really want them to get angry, but it, imagine when you, when you really get blind, uh, how angry you get for sometimes being robbed of the sense of sight. It's a terrible thing. So one goes through an emotional setback. And the work is set up so that these people that we look down upon because they can't see and they're useless with a sense of sight and uh, we almost dismiss them or disenfranchise them is the clever way of saying it. I put them first. They can now help sighted people. They can explain to you. They can help you in the thing that you who are sighted have no idea what's going on. And so I'm reversing, and people like to say that I'm reversing power. <laughs> I think I'm just making them first and the sighted people last. It's a sort of uh, thing that comes to mind uh, that I'm doing that. Screened at this conference with the artist's thanks to videographer Annette Ford of Active Video, UJ Art Gallery and its website Moving Cube, UJ Arts and Culture, University of Johannesburg, MTN South Africa Foundation. Curators Anali Cabano Dempsey, UJ, and Neil Nortje, MTN. Project partners Jaco Mayer, New Music Composer, and Marco Besta, Application Developer. For further details about Moving Cube, please visit movingcube.uj.ac.za and Willem Boschoff's website www.willembosch.com. As a conceptual artist, I work primarily with language. My visual artworks comment on established language systems and how these function in society to empower or to exclude. Writing dictionaries form an integral part of my art making, whether published in book form or presented as large sculptural installations. The Blind Alphabet Project, for example, is a three-dimensional morphological dictionary of uncommon and obtruse words which make the sighted dependent on the reading of a blind guide through that guide's refined sense of touch. The sighted may not touch this graveyard of box words, but a blind guide may handle each sculpted word and read its definition in braille to the sighted person, so placing the blind person at an advantage in the art gallery. The slide shows an exhibition hall with rows of stands, each with a wooden box representing a braille book. Blind alphabet project, letters A, B and C, was first exhibited at the Johannesburg Art Gallery in South Africa during the second Johannesburg Biennial, Africus, in 1997. 
This slide shows lids of several boxes, each with braille text. In this slide, an elderly man is touch reading braille text on one of the boxes. In this slide, a group of visitors to the museum are examining boxes with braille text. One person is holding a small sculpture. Units of the Blind Alphabet Project are exhibited by museums and collectors all over the world. The Blind Alphabet Project was also shown at the 23rd Sao Paulo Biennial of 1996. Left, word sculptures starting with the letters D and E in Willem Boschoff's exhibition, Epat, on the 25th of October to the 24th of November 2007 at Michael Stevenson's gallery in Cape Town, South Africa. 90 blind alphabet project pages are currently on display in the retrospective exhibition Willem Bischoff Word Woes, curated by Helene Smuts at the Javit Art Center, University of Pretoria, South Africa, from 13th March 2021 to the 27th of March 2022. On this slide, a blind guide assisting a sighted researcher opens the braille inscribed lid of a box. A page within the letter L section of the blind alphabet morphological dictionary to explore the sculpted word lab reform. The man is now holding a cube-like sculpture which he has taken out of the box. The slide shows a enlarged photo of the man's hands holding the cube-like shape. There are some folds on one side of the shape. The object represents letter L. Its name is lab reform. Lab reform defined. In Latin, a labrum is a lip and objects that resemble a lip are lab reform. The lab reforms are numerous species of fishes easily recognized by their thick lips, the insides of which are sometimes curiously folded. For Blind Alphabet L 2020, two blocks of Zimbabwe teak are glued around a block of African mahogany so that one of the sides protrudes. A vertical cut suggesting the line between two lips is cut right through and the protruding parts are shaped into two movable soft labriform features. This and the next slide show lacetine, another representative of the letter L. The lacetids are a family of 40 species of wool lizards, which are native to Europe, Africa and Asia. The genus Lacerta contains the most commonly seen lizard species. Their reaction, when detected, is lightning fast and it is impossible to catch them by hand. The lacertine shape made for blind alphabet L 2020 relates to a slender S-like twist in the body of a moving lizard. At the base of the sculpture is a solid piece of lead wood and the interlacing block pattern made of white oak and partridge wood suggests scales. This slide shows a photo of lithoid. Lithoid defined. A lithoid appearance or structure is stone-like. Lithology is the study of the general physical characteristics of rocks from Greek lithos, stone. 
A piece of lithoid leadwood was chosen for blind alphabet L 2020 because it is dark and blackish brown in appearance. It is as heavy as stone. I gave it a few smooth polished facets to make it appear like an unusual crystal cut out of rock at the beginning of time. This slide shows a photo of lanceolate. Lanceolate defined. A lanceolate from the Latin lancea, object, is shaped like the head of a lance or spear. The original lance was mounted on a pole and most often used by horsemen called lancers as fighters in combat with other horsemen and foot soldiers. The sculpture made for Blind Alphabet L 2020 is that of a lanceolate leaf and stem. Note the way the stem joins a distance into the base of the leaf. The wood I choose is matumi, a wood that has a slightly soapy feel when sanded. This slide shows a photo of lituate. Lituate defined. Roman augurs or soothsayers were religious officials who observed natural signs, especially in the behavior of birds, interpreting these as an indication of either divine approval or disapproval of important events. To gain insight from the flight patterns of birds, augurs used a unique handheld device called a litus. The litus is more or less the length of a man's arm. It has a flat spiral at one end. An auger would point it to the skies to mark out a ritual space called a templum. Birds would traverse the templum to give the auger answers to his questions. The lituiform tendrils of vines also resemble the spiral of a litus. I used Oregon pine wood for the lituate carving for blind alphabet L 2020. This slide shows laminiscate. Laminiscate defined. In geometry, a laminiscate is a double circular curve that describes a figure eight. In Greek, lemniskos means ribbon. The lemniscate figure gets interesting if it swirls about in space, and a number of such lemniscatic types can be drawn with different algebraic formulae, the best known of these being the lemniscate of Bernoulli. A simple graphic image of the lemniscate symbolizes infinity or eternity because it has no ending and no beginning. Roman philosopher Beothius, who died in 524 AD, defined eternity as the simultaneously full and perfect possession of an interminable life. The sculpture of a binary laminiscate disc made for blind alphabet L 2020 is made of Meranti wood. This slide shows loculed. The tomato is probably the best known loculed fruit. Slice through it and some seed carrying pockets or locules are revealed. Large tomatoes have many locules. A locule is a small cavity or compartment within an animal or plant organ. In Latin, locule is compartment or chamber. Loculus, plural loculi, is the diminutive. As with the tomato, loculi only begin as very small spaces where seeds develop when the fruit is only just emerging from its flower. 
a Lockheed Lotus seed pod is the idea behind the piece made for Blind Alphabet L 2020. And the wood is that of the sweet thorn tree. This slide shows lapilliform. Lapilliform defined. In Latin, lapis is stone and lapillus is the diminutive. Lapilli are lots of little stones. The word often describes the small nuggets ejected from a volcano. The lapilli fall to earth while still at least partially molten. They cool down as a field of gravel or small stones. For Blind Alphabet L 2020, a small and dense scattering of such stone fragments were arranged on a square format. Lapilliform defined continued. Because the sculpture's lapilli are really angular bits of wood and not stone, their physical resemblance is therefore correctly called lapilliform. The woods used are leadwood, partridge wood and zebra wood, also known as African ebony. The nameplate on the side of the display is in blackish zebra wood because it shows off the Eschutian pins, the decorative brass nails with round domed heads used for the braille inscription. This slide, closing the presentation, shows a photo of Mr. Willem Boschoff as a young man, sitting on the floor with bare torso, holding a sculpture of a duck. Special thanks to Mr. Robert Slynn for lending his voice and recording the text.